Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining us uh, for our August webinar about photos and floor plans and videos and how to attract guests but sell more nights also. Um, with this is from Touch Day. I'm Tyann Marsink Hammond with Touch Day, and I have a really great crew with me. Um, I'm going to introduce each of them. So first, we have Nancy McClear of Florida Rent. Wait, Nancy, I'm going to get started. Florbo, Florida Rentals by Owner.com. Exactly. Hi. And congratulations on the new launch. You guys just updated everything. That's so exciting. So everybody's listening. Make sure you go check it out too. And we have um, Rebecca Lombardo of True Place. Nice to oh, meet you. Rebecca. There you are. Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Got you now. And Christina Candler of Acasa. Hi. Good morning, everybody. And Jason Sprankle of Key Data Dashboard. Hey, good morning. Great to be here with you guys. And handing it over to Andy McNulty of Touch Day. Hello. I'm the British voice on the call, <laughs> um, which I suppose to Florida people is quite common. So I'm not, not sounding so alien, thankfully. Um, yeah, as Ty and said, thanks for joining it. Uh, we did this webinar a few weeks ago on uh, to the Touch Day audience, and uh, we had quite an interesting discussion. Um, so I'm looking forward to this. Uh, different panel. Well, Rebecca, you were on the last one, but uh, the, the other three, it's, uh, it's, it's a new panel, which is good to hear a different perspective. Uh, if you have any questions as we go along, just put it in the chat box. You can also put it in the Q&A. There's both the chat and the Q&A. Don't worry about which one shall I put it in. Put it in either. We'll dig it out. We'll either answer the, the question at the end or during. Uh, Ty and will prod me and say, stop, Andy, and we'll, we'll, ask, we'll answer the question. Um, anything I've missed, Tyan, before we kind of get going? No, I think you've got it. All right, sounds good. Okay, so visuals. Um, I, I remember, in fact, I wrote an article last week, way back in 1995. Um, yes, I am old enough to go that far back. 1995 doesn't seem that far away to me, but I know that uh, for a lot of people it is a long time ago. Uh, but I remember using Verbo and clicking through the links to Verbo and finding really, really sketchy and horrible photos. And I do still occasionally find those on the web. But in fact, I did see an upside down bedroom on, on, on one of the photos yes. the other day, which was just like blew my mind. Um, but it's thankfully pretty rare. So I don't think this is going to be too much about photos, but I wanted to get your perspective and whether you see it the same way. And I thought maybe Nancy, it would be interesting to get your view because you're you're running the Florida Vacation Rental Buyer Owner listing site um, with what, like a thousand plus customers on there. I would imagine you see if there are still people putting fairly sketchy photos. Is that common now or have we completely gone past that stage? Uh, I would say for sure there's still the odd ones that are in there more than I would like because as a marketer of those listings on Florida rent to buy owners it's it's very difficult to try and promote any homes that have you know grainy sketch photos of you know within the condo of a view through a screen which shows you the mesh more than anything. You know, when you're thinking about that, I would say I, I'm gonna just throw it out as a ballpark, maybe 10%. And it's usually the people that are doing it, you know, part-time, not so professional, just to fill out maybe the winter season. So that's what we're finding. It's it's I'm still shocked um, because it's so easy to get professional photos done. And it's, you know so prevalent in the marketplace when you look at the competition next door you know or on the other part of the listing site it's it's like night and day some of them are just shocking how different they are mm. so, okay yeah. well that's that's encouraging to hear that it is a minority um albeit still shocking that that still happens um i'm thinking perhaps in like a turnkey or a vacasa world christina where um you're having to do photos at scale. Um, I would imagine bringing on the number of listings you bring on every month, <laughs> you must have it down to quite a science. Um, and so I've got a two part question really. The first part is, are you finding that you're, um, it's difficult to get the right photos because you're either 
facing owners who don't want to pay for those or have given you a stock of really bad photos. Or maybe you shoot them all yourself. Apologies, I don't know. You might just kind of scrap it and start again. And then secondly, how you do that at scale and still maintain the quality. So with both Vacasa and Turnkey, we're one company now, um, but with both Vacasa and Turnkey, we do the professional photography for the homeowner, um, even if they, we, and, and to Nancy's point, we did see homeowners when, you know, we would go through listings and we would look and, and we'd see the photos of like, you know, somebody standing with an iPhone and a mirror, you can see them in the bathroom. Uh, the one that always struck us is we don't know why some people take a close up of a toilet uh, and put that in their listing. And we do see that from time to time. Um, but with our uh, with our model, um, we do provide the professional photography for the homeowners. Um, to your point, it, it is at scale. We do it on every single home. Um, our staff is actually trained to do it. Um, so our staff, uh, we we train them on how to do it. Um, we use you know Matterport with Vacasa inside Maps with Turnkey, and that's something even that you know if you've got somebody who's starting out, they can you know it's pretty economical to sign up with either one of those companies. Mm -hmm. um, but with those, you get you know the HDR photos, 360 degree tours. They create floor plans, um, which are all things that really help to enhance a listing. Um, one of the really great things about the floor plans is that many times when you're looking through a home, you're trying to figure out, especially larger properties, um, kind of where everything is situated and what the flow of the property is. And when you include those floor plans by using companies like that, it allows someone when they are looking at a listing to mentally start to place themselves in the home and see the, the flow of the home and say, oh, I can put my kids in this room and my husband and I will take this room and my sister and her husband can take that room and their kids can be here. It allows them to see if the flow of that home works well for the situation that they're having. Um, as you know, especially in Florida, many times you'll have properties that are listed as say a four bedroom, three bath, but it's three bedrooms, two bath upstairs, and then a, kind of a lock off unit that's all by itself. And if you're traveling with children, you might get there and have a little bit of a surprise if you don't realize if you're just flipping through, we know not everybody reads uh, everything that's in that description. Um, so if they're just flipping through looking at photos, they may not realize that when they get to that photo of a floor plan, it's like, whoa, okay, this is a whole separate area. Um, or conversely, you could have somebody who's specifically looking to be able to travel together, but have that separation as well. So it really enhances the listing in both ways to make sure that the guest fully understands the property that they're coming into and that this is attractive to them and what they're looking to get. Um, but again, in our case, our staff is trained to do it. We do it for every single home. Um, we wouldn't take uh, a home, for example, and, and go live with it with, um, you know, those, those old iPhone photos. Mm -hmm. iPhone takes great photos if you do it correctly. Uh, I wanna, don't, don't want to slag iPhone. They take great photos. You just have to make sure that you're doing it correctly. But our team has a full shot list of exactly how to do it and how to stage it and making sure there's plenty of light. And what we tell people when we're coming to their home, because they do need to have it ready to go, is envision your home is going to be in Home and Gardens magazine. This is you opening up your home to the entire world to see, and it's your chance to show them how beautiful your property is or how quirky it is or how cute it is. And so you want to make sure that you've put your best foot forward. Mm. And, and so do, do, I, do I take it that now every single home that, that you onboard, you are doing the floor plan and the walkthrough? Is it kind of the same product really, isn't it? It is. It's all part of the same product um, with both of those parties. Uh, that's exactly what you get in all of them is the floor plan, the 360 degree tour and the photos that come out of it. Um, and again, it's all about making sure that you are following that shot list. So our team has been trained on how to use this equipment. Our team has been trained on how, you know, what's the right height to put it and what's the right angle so that you don't have a bed that looks like it's eight feet long, or I guess it would be like 10 feet long bed that's this narrow or looks different from the other angle. Um, so it's really teaching our, our staff how to go out and do it. But every home, and you're right, I mean, we can have hundreds of homes go live in, in one month, and every single one of those properties is onboarded in a very systematic way. Uh, and really a big part of it is making sure that the images are accurate, um, we don't want to misrepresent the property, and that they're clean and professional and inviting in to that guest that's looking mm -hmm. at them. Mm -hmm. Okay, very cool. Um, 
J Jason, I wonder in, because you've got kind of a dual take on this, haven't you? You've got, you've got your 360 blue background, but you've then got the key data and some of the, I don't know, do you capture data coming out of listings that have photos and floor plans and visuals? And are you able to, to track that? Or, or is that kind of a bit too far off because you're more into ADR and room rates and things like that? Yeah, a little bit of both is the short answer. So, you know, uh, 15 years of uh, trying to merchandise high-end properties along the uh, coast gave us some pretty good just internal science around what works and doesn't work and kind of what our competitors were doing. Uh, obviously spent a lot of that time trying to see what best in class results produce. And then with our clients, we don't specifically study, um, uh, you know, what type of photos results in the highest ADR occupancy, but there's some great data out there that I'm happy to kind of share that's available publicly. And then our customers often times will kind of bifurcate or, or set up these cohorts of different types of photos. So they'll say like, um, okay, houses with floor plans is a good example. Uh, we partner with True Place and they looked, for example, at what kind of ADR occupancy do you get with houses with floor plans versus houses without. And obviously those results differ per location and type of home, et cetera. Um, you get a little bit of a factor of people tend to put floor plans on the bigger homes because the requirements there to avoid a little bit less confusion. But on the whole, you see some really great data uh, as you would expect around essentially the better job you do of telling that story and meeting that needs of somebody looking for a story, the higher the ADR and occupancy are that you see out there. Uh, and the way we always thought about it at 360 Blue, and then we, we can talk about the data that's out there at any point in time. Um, if you remember Maslow from psychology way back in, in high school, you know, this hierarchy of needs. I, I really think that applies to how you think about kind of telling a story that in my mind combines the description, the photos, the videos, and the tours, or whatever pieces of those you need to convey those needs that a person has when they're looking to book a family uh, vacation. If you think about it at the core, it kind of starts with catching their eye, right? I think professional photos are, are kind of just a must have. You're merchandising your stuff on VRBO, Airbnb, booking, you're up against professional quality. It's just a necessary function at this time. So can you catch your eye with something beautiful, high quality photos? But then beyond that, it's just as important to use the photos, the descriptions on the photos, the videos, the tours, whatever the case may be, to make sure that you're meeting their other needs. Are the bed configurations suitable for the people that are traveling? Are the beds in the right location for the people that are traveling? For example, if you have grandparents or elderly folks or the king beds on the first floor where they need them versus the third floor? And is it really easy for them to digest that story? And then the fun stuff at the top of the period, and right? Are there great things for the kids, the outdoor, the, you know, the, the things in the city appealing to what you want to do with your own vacation. And I think, you know, you blow it right off the bat if you don't catch their attention with beautiful photos at the bottom of the pyramid. If they can't understand where the beds are, if they kind of get confused and it's hard to just make sure that their practical or logistical needs are met, you can lose them there. And then the way you close the deal is the, you know, what are we going to do when we're in the house? Are there fun spaces? Is there amazing things to do around there? Um, and if you don't go in that order, I think, you know, you lose them right out of the gate. Yeah, I can see a lot of nodding on the panel. Right? And, and um, I, I wholeheartedly agree as well with the, the, the storytelling angle of it. And I think having established that so few people have sketchy photos now, we can make the assumption that the reverse is true, that most people have great photos. It's now about how you knit it all together and what you do right. with it. Um, right. and, and, and you are so right that if, if the photos are great, but they are the, either aren't sequenced in the right way or they're not complemented by great text or um, engaging content, then you kind of lose a bit of the effect of it. So I, I agree with you, it, it, it's, it's, it's all together. Um, quick poll on the screen um, about the kind of other things you're doing or the sort of things you're doing with, with visuals. Um, Rebecca, leading on from that, that point that Jason was mentioning there about um, the, the sort of the sequencing and the flow of things. I know you've got some interesting data about the way that it's not just how it sequences it, but it's the way it engages the guest and keeps them on the page for longer when you have virtual tours and walkthroughs. Um, talk to us a little bit about that and what you've seen. Right, yes, so to, to Jason's point, um, if you start to think of photography as 
a, a marketing piece and you start to think of floor plans as an information piece, you start to get a better understanding of what you need to have in terms of property visuals these days. Because if you just have photos and, and quality photos, even at that, you know, you're doing, you're doing a good job marketing the product. But if you have a floor plan, you have more information. So uh, everyone's kind of stepping up their game now and saying like, yes, absolutely quality photos. It uh, markets the property really, really well. Um, but in order to provide that extra bit of information, uh, to Christina's point, nobody's really reading anymore. And so we're trying to provide information visually. So what we found was that there was a 33% reduction in calls to reservation agents when there was an interactive floor plan tour on the property. So when you talk about the power of visuals, um, the fact that you can have a visual so powerful that it impacts another department in a positive way, that's what everybody's looking for, right? Um, and then if you do have an interactive floor plan tour on the property versus one that you don't, what we found is that it's about a 67% higher revenue um, on these larger properties. Again, to, you know, to Jason's point that they tend to be on the more revenue gener generating properties. And to go a step further in terms of marketing, we found that you get to keep them on that tour for three to 10 minutes. That's insane. That's great SEO. Um, they're really engaged. They're more likely to convert. That's a very long time to be on the tour. And I'm not talking about just like the property page. This is the actual tour itself. So very, very good data. Yeah, it's huge. That's really huge. Um, the reduction in the, in the inbound questions, uh, certainly for property managers, I would have thought is gold, not just during the booking, because I guess many people book direct or book instantly, but afterwards, you know, the questions come afterwards. Whereas if they've got that floor plan, I guess the, I can't remember, uh, is there a double bunk? Uh, is there a ground floor bathroom that my parents can walk to, you know, um, all gets answered. So I think, I think that is not to be overlooked. Because the, these days, I think we all know that running a property management business is hard work. And the more you can kind of step away from those details with things that help you technology wise, then you can focus on the business. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's really interesting data. Um, how, how many, um, I don't know if it's the right kind of question to ask you, Rebecca, but do, do you have a sense of how many people are using floor plans? Uh, is it still kind of less than half people out there, a third? My, my guess is probably less than a quarter of the people have floor plans still. So it's kind of a really big opportunity. Would I be wrong or right? So I, I think you're right in the sense that um, there's still a fraction of people actually using interactive floor plans uh, on their properties or using floor plans as a, you know, as a visual marketing piece. Um, most people are still uh, just doing photography. And if someone was wanting to get into a visual floor plan, I'm sure the pricing greatly changes between whether you've got a couple of properties or your portfolio of 500. Well, what kind of pricing are we talking about? Do you have some kind of indication where we can kind of think about the value of that? Yeah, I mean, if you think about the fact that one of our virtual tours, whether it's, it's our 3D product or our interactive product um, for the floor plans, it's, it's gonna cost anywhere from 300 to $400 in like a three or four bedroom. But if you think of how quickly you make that back, it's, it should be a no brainer, totally. right? Totally. Um, especially since our, our interactive floor plan tour comes with all the photography included. So now you're talking about like 350 to 400 dollars on a four bedroom, all the photography included with the interactive floor plan tour. So you get a virtual tour and all the photography for that price. Um, that, that really should be a no brainer. You're obviously going to make that back in a one night stay. Yeah, 100 percent. That's really interesting that, it, that it's kind of that that much in reach. Um, Granted, times by a portfolio of 500, but each of them looked at as an individual generating income unit, then I'm sure it's uh, it's, it's great value. Um, yeah, when you look at it as a cost um, in nights versus dollars and how long you can use it. So say you're using it for two to three years and it costs less than one night, just the fraction that it costs. And you think, okay, am I going to get one extra night this year? Okay, you've already made more money. It, it truly is a no brainer and doing floor plans, professional photos, and then upping your game with those interactive uh, floor plans, video and things like that. Um, and I am going to end the poll and just share um, roughly 
what folks said. So 40% of our folks on the webinar use a virtual tour, only 40%. Uh, but 60% of people have floor plans. 40% are using video. 20% are using graphics as well. And no one is using photos with people. Although I didn't get to answer. I do have photos with people. Tell us about your photos of people, Tyron. <laughs> <laughs> so my photos of people are more along the Easter egg surprise type photos. Uh, we wanted to be sure to convey our brand voice of fun. Um, so our property, our big one that we built, um, a 10 bedroom house, it is in the theme of Scotland, Isla Sky. So um, my husband donned his kilt and there's a few Easter egg photos of the Scotsman using our house. And we've got a hashtag called Scott not included when folks look at it. <laughs> and I love getting the messages from folks and they'll specifically say, hey, we really wanted to book your house, but your dates weren't available. And then another person says, hey, just wanna check, it, will the Scott be making my coffee in the morning? So bringing that fun point in to the property um, and to our brand and lightening things up um, that we, we're fun people and we want our guests to have fun. That's a really good point well made that um, we, we're talking very generally about photos and floor plans as if everyone is the same, but each brand is going to be slightly different. Um, so I agree with you. I think it's smart to think about how you position your visuals. Um, Nancy and Christine, I'm going to come back to you in a second, but I just wanted to ask Jason another question, actually, about what we were talking about there in terms of the ROI on this kind of investment. Um, in your data, are you seeing that the, the average nightly rates that people are charging post-pandemic, well, in the latter stages of this pandemic, particularly in this environment where there's a huge amount of demand and not that much supply. Are people, regardless of imagery, raising their prices? Because what I'm thinking there is if you're not, or indeed if you're looking to invest in, in kind of visuals and floor plans, now might be the moment because you can bump those prices up and quite easily cover it. Yeah, I, th I think it's fair. The short answer is yes. I mean, across the board, you're north of 20% pretty much in every single market in the US and, and obviously international is catching up as those markets are beginning to reopen, although the 19 variant is obviously slowing that a little bit. But yeah, the short answer is universally people are pushing prices. They're pushing them up in the 40% range in some of your peak markets, but the demand is certainly there. So you know, a lot of people will take the inverse approach, which is I'm getting plenty of people calling. I've got high occupancy. You know, no need to go out and spend money on floor plans. I would suggest what you suggest, which is the reverse, which is to say now's the, you know, the perfect opportunity to see what you can do in terms of pushing your prices, right? Being full does not mean you've won. I have, you know, having the higher occupancy with the higher prices or the rev par, as we say in the hospitality space, is what really drives the ultimate profits for you. So if, if you're really playing off of occupancy and not paying enough attention to, to pushing your prices, or if you're being complacent with the fact that you're full, I think you're missing an opportunity. And so whether it's a down market or whether it's a busy market, you know, price elasticity allows you to, to make more money um, if you're still focusing on the core things and you know, nothing more important in terms of merchandising your product than that story that you tell through these visuals. Yeah, I, I, I agree. It's kind of one of those business lessons, isn't it, about what do you do when the times are good with that extra money? Do you put it back into the business or do you pocket it? And I think if you're in it for certainly the next few years, you put it right back into the business every time, um, yeah. assuming you've not gone through a completely disaster in the last year and you need the money, of course, there's always that balance. But um, yeah, reinvesting now is um, in, in not just in visuals, but in, in every aspect of the business is uh, definitely the smart. I mean, I guess we could look at it like, you know, there's this kind of what seems like an unending supply of demand from travelers, you know, who are coming from other categories. Um, but I still say reinvest where you can. You've got to strengthen your business where you can. Yeah. Uh, Nancy, I wanted to ask you about other kind of visuals, because I know you're big on the, the, the power of social media to drive engagement and visits. And I know you therefore do a lot of different kind of imagery around getting people sort of hooked, kind of emotional part of their brain, which kind of gets them in and drives them through, through to your website. Are you still doing a lot of that? And is that still working for you? Are you talking personally or are you talking with Florida Red Dubai owners? Both. 
Yeah. Okay. So um, definitely we're huge on social in terms of Flarbo as a listing site. Um, it's where people are connecting, they're dreaming, they're asking questions, especially in a lot of the, the group scenarios um, about finding out about these places, um, especially in this um, time frame that we're in now, like, is it safe? Is it what, what's there to do? So definitely in terms of graphics, it's very important. Um, and I think you really need to read um, the person that you're telling the story to in terms of you know, all these new markets that you just mentioned are coming in. So how are you now changing up your photography and your graphics to digital nomads, let's say, or these people that are still web learning at home uh, with education. So you should be thinking a lot about that. It shouldn't be stagnant where it's the same old thumbnail that you're promoting over and over and over again. Um, and in that terms too, like don't get complacent with your listing site as well. You know, you've got to switch it up so that, um, you know, that what you're putting on your, your, your primary photo is changing according to the needs of the time and, and who you're trying to get into your home. But in terms of graphics, you know, it's tricky when you're talking about the listing site, um, you don't really want uh, host to post photos with graphics on it because as a marketer of the listing site it's very different difficult to promote that when it's got tags and right. stars and you know text all over it so in that respect in terms of listing site I would keep that really clean and personally um, I would advise people use your staged photos definitely staged photos to tell the story uh, about who you, you know, what is there to do in your home? Don't just show what's only in the home, also show what's in the area as well, um, because most people are coming to enjoy the area. And, and a lot of people are looking for outdoor spaces now. So don't forget about that. That's a really key component. And, you know, if you have a level that's only allowing 24 photos and you need more, go up a level and then have 50 photos instead. But in that aspect, I think it's important that then you can take and capture that lead and then nurture that potential guest straight through. Like that should be your, your hook, in my opinion, and then lead them, especially if it's a niche site like ours, you can lead them into your journey of, oh, here, check out my drone video, which showcases, you know, how to use the property with people in it or not you know, and you showcase in the area as well as the whole property, which even works better than floor plans, in my opinion, because you're walking through the entire unit um, with video. And then that's really capturing and telling your story as a host about how much you care about the guest, you know, your professional, and how it's a really an indicator of trust to the potential guest that you, you're, you're trying to capture in terms of how you're gonna take care of them. You're professional in this aspect, so you're probably gonna have a great experience when you're in the home. So in that aspect, I would say, then you get them on to your, your own social, and then you start marketing to them with the graphics and you know on your own platform. And, and to what I think it was uh, Rebecca had said, you know that's gold in terms of nurturing them, that, that lead, and putting them on your own website and getting them to watch the video for a long time, it's huge Google value to increase your ranking. So in, for me, as both a host and as a, you know, the, the founder of Flarbo, we encourage that. We encourage the people put the photos on there, hook them into your own guest nurture, and then close the deal. Because you know that's the best way you're going to make a fantastic impression and then get that booking and then like Jason said then you can really start upping your game in terms of rates because you're providing this incredible experience to people and they want to pay for it so that's how I see the graphics working anyway with you know both as a host as well as you know the 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 listing site founder kind of thing <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely well, Totally understood. Um, okay, let's shift a bit away from kind of eyes on the property and conversion, et cetera. I'm quite interested in what visuals we might use after things have been booked. And I'm wondering, um, Christina, in the, the Vicasa world, are you using many um, uh, other tools after the guest has booked, such as how to operate the keypad on the front door or a video? 
like a walk through from the street to the actual place they're staying. Um, I don't know, other things. You, you nodded, so I guess you are. So t- t- tell us about what you're doing there. Yeah, so exactly. When, once you've booked and you know everything is confirmed, you then start to get a steady drip of information leading up to arrival day, your door code. Um, you can click through to a video to make sure not every door Uh, electronic door lock works the same. So there is a video to let you know exactly how that one works. So you're not standing there waiting for it to open and it's not gonna open. You have to actually (laughs) turn it. Um, But it'll it'll give you all of that information. Um, We don't necessarily do a walkthrough on how to get there from you know, the, the front, but what we do is we give very specific instructions as far as um, directions on how to get there or something that's gonna help you like um, the front door, uh, the you know, address is in red letters above the front door um, so that when you pull up, you know that you're at the right property. Um, and that is one of the things that we make sure when we're, when we're bringing a home on board is we have to make sure that their street number is, is um, very well displayed because you're having strangers trying to find your property. Sometimes those flights have, are delayed or there was an accident on the way in mm-hmm. and they got delayed and they're getting in, in the, uh, you know, late at night and they're on a street that they don't know. So when they can look down at those instructions and see, hey, uh, you know, it said that it's the purple house with red, the street uh, number is above the front door. Uh, with red letters and you're like oh this is the one that just makes it so much easier as far as giving those clear instructions on how to get there clear instructions on how to um, uh, unlock the home Uh, and of course we have a full breakdown of what's inside the property and where it's located so that they can you know quickly get into the home and, and get acclimated to where things are so it'll tell them you know for example you know where uh, the door lock is located, um, especially in properties like, for example, one of ours is in historic St. Augustine. Many times you don't want to take an old historic 150 year old door and just drill a lock into it. And that's the front door of the property. So it might be on the side. So we'll give that information like park in the driveway. The entrance will be on the side door. You'll see that it's a red door. You'll see that. And we give all of those full instructions to get them through, but we do include that link out to the video as far as how to use that lock. That's interesting to hear. I I liken the 1995 grainy photos with incredibly hard to locate keys, but those kind of things went hand in hand, you know, many years ago. But I still think that pre-arrival and first day is really tough for the guest if they've had, like you've said, that stressful experience, the plane's been delayed, it's got canceled, whatever. Um, these days, testing through airports and things like that. So um, like remembering that guest is totally frazzled when they arrive and just, I like your idea of like just big letters up there and a photo of like, this is, you're in the right place if you see this. Um, Even if the, the hero photo or the, you know, the photo that's, you know, the top of listing, if it's not the outside of the home, um, because, Again, a lot of times when you're on those those sites, you want to make your home attractive and have them click through. So that might not be the shot. Uh, so in their mind, they may be thinking of what this living room looks like or this view of the ocean, uh, not necessarily what the home looks like. So in those communications, when we send those out, you do see like the front of the home so that when they're pulling up, they're like, that's the home. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I just had the exact same experience. I was on vacation in Belize and I was like, oh, that's it. I recognize the white fence. That's our property. Right. <laughs> I was like, that's where we're going to go. Yeah. And I was like, thank you. I actually rented a Vacasa home. So I was like, thank you, Vacasa, for putting that right there <laughs> on <it>. the phone. <laughs> <laughs> um, so how do you deliver that to the guests then? Do, do you have like a Vacasa app or like are you sending it through WhatsApp or SMS? Or how does that happen? So they do get an email from us and there is a portal for them to log into. And in that portal, all the information that you need is in there. So uh, you kind of just, uh, once you have your reservation code, you can go and log into your portal and you'll see everything about there. And it'll include even things like when the garbage days are and, you know, your check-in and check-out time. Um, We include contact information for who your local contact is going to be in case you are running late or you have a problem when you're there. So you might have like who to reach out to if your hair dryer isn't working. Um, But if you're also going to a location, for example, like when I was in Belize, where you can book a lot of uh, excursions, you know, there was a concierge available. They said, hey, this person will help you with booking your excursions. Or in this case, it was on an island. So it was like, we can help you arrange your um, your flight transfer from the mainland out to the island. Uh, so that kind of information is all included. It's in an email form that's sent out. Some folks don't like portals, but it's in an email form that gets sent out. And then you do have that 
portal that you can log into with your reservation number and pull it right up. And you can be interactive on there as well. Yeah, cool, very good. Um, Jason, when, when you were um, at 360 Blue, um, servicing really high-end, like beautiful properties, how did you kind of approach that challenge of, um, like the way Christina's described there, where she has like visuals of where I'm staying. You know, how, presumably when you talk about a luxury vacation rental experience, you, there's a balance between like how much you want to kind of just let the guests do without interruption and how much you need to kind of handhold them. And that, that balance is really subtle and quite difficult sometimes. What did you do operationally there? How did you manage that? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> we did a lot of tracking the calls that were coming in and trying to identify on a daily basis where there was any points of confusion so that we could eliminate them the next day, right? So if you're consistently getting calls about people who don't know how to turn on a pool heater or confused about the TV, you want to go in and try to make it as crystal clear so you can just eliminate that burden, right? Anything that you're doing that's making the guest stress or be uncomfortable or feel less like they're at home and they just know what they're doing, I think adds to the experience of them coming and writing a great review and coming back and encouraging others. So we, we probably did, um, you know, what I would consider to be a, a, a pretty serious a lift or effort in terms of making sure we were over communicating with guests, right? We wanted them to have, we had videos on how to use the electronics, these big 10 bedroom homes with theaters and stuff. Like the last thing you want is to rent a house with a theater. Your kids want to watch it and you're in there jamming the 12 remote controls, trying to figure out how to, how to do it. And so we had videos in an app that made it really crystal clear how to do it. We had a link to talk to one of our technicians if you got stuck, just an overabundance of communication, I think. And, and going back to, to something Nancy pointed out, I thought it was the most important word used today, which is trust, right? If you think about how people are merchandising things on Amazon and kind of the best in class, like it's great to go on and see a picture of a beautiful model wearing something but a lot of people look at that and they look with apprehension at either that product or in our case, the houses. And they say, what am I not seeing? Like, it, it's not going to look like that when I get there, or that's not going to look like that on me. And I think the way you can close some of these deals, and I think it applies to us, is to lower that apprehension, right? Try to do whatever you can to build the trust. And so having continuity between what you market it on the front end and then the arrival package that they get, like you're trying to avoid surprises, right? More than anything. So whether you're selling a, a two bedroom for 2000 a night or 10 bedroom for 20,000 a night, I think what's important is you're, you know, you're, you're conveying to the guests that you're selling something that they can count on. And so you'll see videos nowadays when you go to buy a jacket where they have a normal person turning around and putting their hands in the pockets and that, you know, that's intended to convey that trust. And so I think, like one of the things we did with our homes uh, to, to the point about kind of post uh, booking uh, merchandising or information was we would show a realistic picture on a map of exactly how many steps it is away from the beach. You juxtapose that with some people who they take this perfect angle where it looks like right. it's on the water that catches up with you. You might get the first guy in the door, but the, they're going to write the review and say, that's not, that's not what we bargained for. The jacket doesn't look good on me. It doesn't fit right. Um, and so I, I would encourage your guests who are in it for the long haul and want more than a few guests in the door is to make sure that your marketing is not just overselling, it's, it, it's selling that trust factor. Yeah, that's a really, really um, well-made point that, that um, given that we don't have a star rating or a consistency kind of yeah. barometer. Yeah, people are nervous. Yeah. yeah, people are nervous. And it's also about delivering on an expectation. So. That's right. Like you said, I could have a one bedroom cabin in the woods renting it, I don't know, $100 a night, or I could stay somewhere far more fancy. That's not what's important. The, point, the important bit is like, do I get to that cabin in the woods? And is there that firewood there that you said that was going to be right. the photo? That's right, my yeah. expectations met. Yeah, 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 okay, completely. Um, so I'm thinking, Rebecca, then, when you go to shoot kind of properties, um, do you have those kind of frank discussions with, with the owners and the managers about, well, this kind of thing would might be, this is like a challenging entrance to the property or, you know, how do we shoot that? Or do you kind of try to like look the other way? How do you, how do you do the thing that Jason's kind of describing this? So you get across the reality. 
So a couple of things. One is that the company True Place was named True Place <laughs> because, <laughs> <That's a good laughs> because we want to present an accurate reflection of what you're actually getting. Um, and we have what I call SWAT teams of photographers across the country. So they have seen and done so much at this point <laughs> that they know what scenario is going to be tricky. They know what's going to be complicated. They know how to work with that situation to make sure they still deliver you know, a premium product to the client. So there, you know, you never know what you're going to get when you walk up to one of these places. Um, so having an experienced team of photographers who can also rely on each other and rely on our team back at headquarters to problem solve as you go. Um, nobody's out there on an island shooting. I mean, maybe literally on an island, but um, not figuratively on an island. So they have resources that they can rely on with each other and with us at headquarters to, to get that done. Um, you know, we, and we work with key data to see the results are showing up in the ROI that people are making. So we have a lot of customers who have been working with us for 10 to 15 years um, because that experience builds on itself and, and trends change as well. So I hope that answers the question. Yeah, no, it does. It does. I, but I like the first one, true place. <laughs> that is ultimately um, what it's about. It's like, yeah, can we convey this place truly? I, I like that a lot. Um, I hadn't thought about that as the kind of the origin of the name, but uh, yeah, now I do. Um, I, do yes. I do have something I want to point out that um, panelists have said a few times is making sure you have the right person doing the right job as far as your marketing and graphics and photos, floor plans and all of that. Um, case in point, when you look at a camera, what is the most important part of a camera? It's actually the 12 inches behind it. So it doesn't really matter too much what the tool is. It's how you're using the tool. Uh, and that is very clear. You can put a professional grade camera into two people's hands. One person knows how to use it. One person does not at two vast different results. Same thing with an iPhone. Um, you can put an iPhone into two people, different, two different people's hands, vastly different results. So, you know, making sure you have the right person. And one of the reasons you would hire true place or a professional photographer who really focuses on vacation rentals. And, and said with authority as well there, time because you, you, you were and are still when you have some time in amongst the 55 other things you do, a professional photographer. So um, yeah, you know, you know, the, you know, the, um, the landscape. Um, we, we're coming towards the end of the, the, the session, the last question. So if there is anybody on the, the attendee list that wants to ask something, now is your chance. Um, whilst they're thinking of whether they want to ask a question or not, I'm just gonna pose the last question to each of you. Oh, Jason, did you, did you want to say something? Yeah, I was just gonna say for those of you who are, uh, might be tune, tuning in for some you know, technical guidance on photography, I know we kind of said, you know, we expect them to be professional, but there was a great study that was done. It's done in 2017, so it's a little dated, but I think it's equally applicable. It was uh, a couple of PhDs from Carnegie Mellon and, uh, and Harvard. And the study was called, What Makes a Good Image uh, for Airbnb? Uh, and they went and they diagnosed like image angle and color and hue and saturation, they were looking for where the best return was in terms of tweaking a photo. So uh, if you're one of those folks that are looking for kind of the technical specifics on how can I get a couple of more bucks out of photo quality, I would encourage you to Google and find that study. They, they really broke it down into three things. Uh, kind, of, kind of obviously if you think about it, but when you start to see the data translate to Airbnb or VRBO dollars, it's worth understanding that the first one was composition of the photo as you'd expect. The second was color. And the third one was something that they called figure ground relationship, meaning like, are you able to see where the bed is situated in the room as opposed to like the bed kind of disappears into the background I can't see the floor. It goes back to, do I understand what I'm buying? And then they translated it to a dollar amount for each factor. So if I improve the color, you know, I connect with people emotionally, what's that likely to do? If I improve the composition, what's likely to do? And of the three, they found that color had the biggest impact. Uh, they, they put a number on it, $6,790 was the average difference if they tweaked the color specifically to appeal to people emotionally. Uh, by comparison, the composition had a $2,500 impact and the figure ground relationship, or like, can I tell what I'm seeing in the photos, how I think of it, was a $3,400 relationship. So for the ones on the phone who want 
tweak the photos for a couple of dollars, even if they're kind of professional, worth taking a look at the study. Fantastic stats. Thank you for sharing that. And maybe we'll try and dig that out and share it to, to everyone afterwards. Um, good. All right. Thank you. So now last question. Um, you can say one word or it can be a sentence or a brief sentence. What is the one, th I'm going to come to each of you in turn. What is the one thing that a property manager listening to this and thinking about where they should invest next in terms of visuals, what's the one thing you think that they should invest in? So Christina, let us know what you think. So just touching back to what I, I opened up with, which is um, one of the biggest ROIs that you will have dollar for dollar is on the professional photography. So I would encourage someone, um, much to Tanya's point, uh, you know, an iPhone in different hands makes a big difference. Um, so even if, you know, all you have is an iPhone, but the dollar amount that you spend to get photos, one or two nights pays for that. Invest in quality photography, and I would absolutely invest in um, a guided tour, uh, you know, like a 360 tour and a floor plan. It really and truly helps the guests to understand the flow and the layout of the home and speaks to them as to whether or not this is the right property for them. And again, every guest has different needs. Uh, and it will also help on the back end uh, if somebody didn't understand <laughs> what a home was like and you get those calls, I didn't realize. Yeah. Uh, so absolutely, it gives a true representation of your home. It helps them to understand the flow of the property and the visuals themselves. I can't say it enough. This is your one shot or your one opportunity to really market your home and have it look the best that it can in a true representation of your home. So stage your home correctly get good photography and invest in the in the floor plan at a minimum and the 360 degree tour if you can okay good good that was quite a few things christina but we'll take that that was good thank you <laughs> yeah. um nancy what, what, what do you think oh, i would double down on exactly everything that christina okay. said i mean especially coming from a listing site you have got seconds to grab that traveler that's looking through. So professional photography, please, please, please get it done. And especially really think through what your lead photo is going to be at that moment in time. Don't be afraid to switch it up throughout the year or who you want to attract at what different times based on what kind of occupancy you need to fill. And then I would just continue on it through it as a host point of view. Just do some critical thinking, take a little bit of an aerial view and think about that process all the way through about photography, floor plans, drone video is my favorite personally. And then also continue it on. Like, you know, as a property manager, can you do a video digital handshake, you know, in your nurture trying to close that deal? Can you do a little blurb about, here's what you can expect, here's who we are. This is what we want you to enjoy, blah, 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 blah. You know, like just think about it all the way through. It doesn't have to necessarily be limited to the listing site or the video or the floor plans. It can like the sky's the limit in your imagination of how you can nurture that guest all the way through. And I think Christina was the other one that mentioned about, you know, helping with, um, you know, getting the guest uh, acclimatized to the property before they even uh, land on the site. So think about it all the way through. And it's invaluable and it will lead to not only full occupancy, but you know, the best profit you can get. And it is by far the best return on investment. Cool, very good. I'm Rebecca, everything, right? It's true Place's entire suite of products. <laughs> yeah, all, our full suite every time. Um, so I would say, so we do drone too, um, it's, it's hard to, so I think it's really important to understand your audience and make sure that you're communicating with them visually based on how they prefer to be communicated with. I also think it's a huge help to have a library of content. Um, don't avoid putting an interactive floor plan tour or 360 tour on your smallest, darkest pro um, property because you're afraid of people will see exactly how small and dark it is. Um, maybe someone wants that specifically. So I would make your visuals consistent across all of your properties, um, if at all possible. Okay, very good. Jason, any different take on that? Yeah, I, I would listen, listen to your guest questions. You know, every question is an opportunity to improve the information you're sharing and reduce that barrier to entry. So I would take every question that I got on the phone and think about, could I have better communicated that in my marketing through a photo, a floor plan, a video? How could I have avoided them having to call me? They, they want to book online, uh, lower that barrier to entry and make it easy for them by listening to each guest. 
Yeah, very good. Um, I, I would add from the guest perspective, what we spoke about earlier, which is truth and honesty in those photos. Um, and I like what you said, Rebecca, it might be a dark, you know, it might be like, there might be overhanging trees, the dark, that might be what floats my boat. I might quite enjoy that, qualify your guest. Um, there will be nothing worse than uh, trying to lighten up that photo and make it seem different and then get slammed with the negative review. So yeah, agreed. Um, yeah. yeah um, details, pay attention to the details. Um, close the toilet lid open the blinds, let people see if there's light that actually comes into the room. Uh, make sure your bed is tucked and made correctly and you don't have a flat sheet falling out of it. Uh, fluff your pillows because all of those little things show that you care. And it's that act of service and it communicates just as much as a dark photo. If you've got a crystal clear, beautiful professional photo, but three pillows are up and one pillow's fallen down and no one noticed, that shows you don't care. Um, so really pay attention to the details when you're prepping for all of the graphics and photos and, and things like that. Nice, good point. Details matter, absolutely. Great, well, um, have we got any questions? I don't think we have, have we? Um, no, no, no questions. Cool. Um, so I would like to say thank you to um, all four of you, well, five of you, always a thanks to Tyan as well. Um, you've been great guests, great panelists um, with really, really well-made points. Um, and I know you've given up an hour of your time to be here, so we appreciate that. Thank you very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs>